Hey y'all, I am back and we are ready to hit on another nutrition topic and that is artificial sweeteners and sugar alcohols. So let's first dive into what is an artificial sweetener? Well, an artificial sweetener can be a non-caloric or low caloric sweetener that can be used to substitute sugar in different foods. Now, first, Artificial sweeteners themselves, so I'm talking about sucralose, aspartame, neotame, um, even rebicide A, so that would be in stevia. These are caloric free, so zero calories. However, when you are looking at products such as um, Equal, Splenda, uh, Truvia, Purvia, Sweet and Low, when you are looking at these products, those are not non-caloric. Low caloric, yes, but not no calories. So when you are looking at a product such as um, the sweetener in Select PE Science Protein, that specific sweetener has zero calories. So same thing if you're looking in Diet Coke, zero calories used in that product because that is the chemical ingredient, that is the sucralose, that is the aspartame, going into the product and it does not contain fillers. So, when you're looking at Equal, Splenda, Purvia, Trivia, these have more than just that artificial non-caloric sweetener. So, if you're looking at Equal, I buy the Kroger brand, it's a lot cheaper. So, this has dextrose with maltodextrin and aspartame. So, look at your ingredients. You will notice that a lot of them have dextrose, maltodextrin. These are fillers. This is sugar. So, that is why it is about one gram of carb per packet. Now, that is nothing to worry about if you add like one or two packets in your normal coffee. I don't track it. But, if you are doing like, let's say, baking, and you are doing the baking Splenda, doing half a cup of Splenda, that would need to be attributed for in calories, in insulin response, because a high amount of this does elicit a insulin and blood glucose response because there are fillers in there that are sugar and are causing that response. So the sweetener and the Diet Coke and Select Protein, the sweetener itself does not cause a response. It is the fillers within here the sugar that's actually in here, that does cause a response. Now, I know a lot of you guys may be wondering, what should I worry about in regards to safety for high-intensity sweeteners, artificial sweeteners? Well, as long as you are under the ADI, the acceptable daily intake, you are okay. You can look up the ADI and watch your intake and just make sure that I will post right here a picture of the intake that you are consuming less than the ADI. Because that, as long as you're under the ADI, there is no side effects seen, except in things like aspartame, which people with PKU need to watch out for. And also, it is also seen in aspartame that some people can have headaches. And even things like sucralose, people have side effects on. I know that if I have Splenda, my body, my digestive system, hates me. So it is different per person. People have different um, digestive flora and I know there's also research showing that artificial sweeteners can change your gut flora. So different per person, you just have to be careful. So when the FDA allows artificial sweeteners to be marketed, they either choose something being regulated as a food additive or a gross. So when you're looking at Equal, Splenda, those are food additives or gross, and then you have different things that are not specifically, they aren't chosen under a gross or food additive yet, such as what I use, which is better stevia, and when, you're, when I'm talking about stevia being used as a food additive, that is the form of rubicide A. So you aren't looking at like pure extracts of stevia leaf or pure stevia leaf. So I actually bought this because this does not contain the fillers that you see in Truvia and Purvia that actually add calories. This is straight stevia, 
zero calories, very, 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 very strong. So you literally do not even need like a tiny, like, I can't even describe the little bit of morsel that you need this to get sweetener. But it says, ingredients, certified organic stevia extract powder leaf. So I love this stuff. Zero calories. And then I also use Equal, which has one gram of carb. So this would not elicit a blood glucose response. Actually, stevia has been shown to cause insulin sensitivity, which is very good and helps reduce your blood glucose. Um, this, in high amounts, would actually elicit a blood glucose response. I will put all of the caloric information about these different products in this video so you guys know, but let's now go into sugar alcohols. So sugar alcohols are caloric substitutes. They do have calories, but they have reduced calories, and they are different based on the different sugar alcohol. Mannitol, sorbitol, erythrotol, various different sugar alcohols, various different caloric values. Now, when you are looking at products, say Halo Top, that if you look at the macros, they don't match up for caloric information. That is because these sugar alcohols have different caloric values. Erythrotol has 0.2 calories per gram. And that is that makes the product say that the product has 6 grams of erythrotol. When you are counting up the macros for that um, specific product, you're doing 6 times 4 because... Um, Six grams of carbs has four calories per gram, but you really have to look at the six grams of erythrotol and do six times 0.2 to get the calories per gram there. So that's what's confusing. And when you are looking at different sugar alcohols, they are not all 0.2 calories per gram. A lot of them end up being uh, around 2.4. And I know I have done a carbs and fiber video and I have always stated to do um, count your fiber as four calories per gram, but when doing sugar alcohols, you can change that calculation. So, the different sugar alcohols cause different blood glucose responses, and they also cause various different digestive system issues. Sorbitol, mannitol, two that have a very bad lactose effects in some individuals. I know sometimes a large amounts of erythrotol, even for me, causes problems. So you just have to be careful with sugar alcohols and understand that sometimes the low caloric alternative is not good for your digestive system. You have to weigh the differences. So I didn't want to make this video long and confusing. I wanted to make it short and sweet on artificial sweeteners and sugar alcohols. So artificial sweeteners are great in proper consumption and so are sugar alcohols. There is nothing wrong with consuming different sources of natural sugars. Um, sugars and fruit, sugars and carrots, sugars and broccoli. Sugar is not bad. It is all about added sugars and making sure to consume those in proper quantities. My biggest suggestion is keeping your sugar intake um, your added sugar intake, less than 10% of your daily calories. Now, I know that can be hard, but when looking at sugars, your best bet is going for all natural sugars. So sugars from fruits, sugars from honey, um, and making sure that you are getting a variety of nutrients in your diet before filling your diet with those fun foods. When choosing what sweetener to use, your best bet is all natural sugars. And um, I know a lot of people have seen agave nectar, and that would, along with high fructose corn syrup, would probably be the two worst sweeteners that you could use because they involve lots of fructose. And I know fructose is in like different fruits and vegetables and all that stuff. Fructose is not the devil. However, those natural products, those fruits, vegetables, they also contain fiber and different amounts of antioxidants, phytochemicals, and all to counteract the fructose in that product. So fiber changes the digestion. 
high fructose corn syrup, agave nectar, that is straight fructose. So that is going to go into your blood system. It surpasses the different um, glycolysis pathways. So fructose goes into your body and does not care about the energy balance. Glucose, on the other hand, does rely on the energy balance, but um, it surpasses different enzymes in the body, and I'm not going to go into that craziness, but you just want to be careful to watch that high fructose corn syrup in agon nectar intake. I want to thank again my friend Nick Medina for sending me his awesome camera. I'm taking great care of her, feather dusting her. I named her Priscilla. Priscilla, you're doing fabulous. So I hope this video was awesome. Let me know if you have any questions below. I will make sure to include all the links to studies, anything you guys want to learn about. Make sure I include that in the description. I hope you guys have an awesome week. Let me know what you want to learn about and make sure you check out my podcast, Uplift Fit Nutrition on iTunes and SoundCloud. If you want to contact me for any coaching purposes, make sure that you check out my website, upliftfit.org. And that's about it. So thank you, Nick. This is my last week as a undergrad. I'm so excited. I will be graduating with a bachelor's in dietetics, finally. So moving on up in the world. I will see you guys later, and I hope you enjoy this video. Bye, guys.